Hey guys, Kevin here from Relax Learn Guitar. Just gonna make sure all the stuff on YouTube land is working correctly. And make sure that this is actually live. I see red, I see some red, yes, here we go. Hey guys, again, this is Kevin from Relax Learn Guitar. Very excited to be here for the first workshop of 2019. Man, how time flies. Uh, but thanks for joining me tonight for this workshop. Um, it's going to be a great way to start off your new year and to start your new year by playing more guitar. So, can't be anything bad about that. Again, I'm Kevin from Relax and Learn Guitar, and I uh, help people over 40 learn how to play guitar. And I do that with really easy to understand lessons uh, that are well paced, and so folks can play with. Uh, Less pressure, more confidence. So for those of you tuning in, uh, this is a beginner guitar workshop and we're gonna cover quite a bit of ground tonight on a couple of different things. Uh, we're gonna learn uh, about rhythm and strumming. We're also going to talk about how to change those chords smoothly. We're gonna learn a song and we're gonna talk about some habits you can uh, try and get into for the new year to make this the year that you finally learn how to play that guitar. We're also going to uh, have a special little um, offer here at the end of this, so make sure you watch the whole workshop and I'll talk to you guys about a special offer for the Relax and Learn Guitar membership. Um, so far we've got, uh, what's up Donathan and Joe, Joe's from the membership. What's up Joe, thanks for tuning in. So uh, we're gonna cover a lot of stuff. Um, if you have questions, just kind of hold on to those. I'll, I'll kind of answer them after maybe each section or at the end of the workshop. And um, just so you guys know a little bit about us, uh, uh, Vicki and I are empty nesters. So uh, we get the opportunity to spend time doing things that we uh, maybe didn't get to do so much in the past. For me, it's playing guitar. I love to play guitar. I love to uh, teach people what I know so they can relax and play the guitar and enjoy it too. So that's the whole point of all this. I had a buddy of mine ask me to teach him how to play guitar years ago. That's led to people in person, and now I do this online. So, so let's get into it. There's going to be four main sections of this workshop. The first part, we're going to talk about strumming. I'm calling it Strumming 101. We're going to talk about, um, we're going to break this down real basic, and people may feel like this is really super simple stuff. And um, I believe, and I teach folks in my membership, that you want to have all of this stuff down, to get the simple stuff correct, it's really gonna pay off later. So you wanna do things correctly, not quickly, and that's what we'll kind of focus on. So part one, we're gonna do strumming, which is kind of how to have rhythm and timing when you strum. Probably the most important thing, in my opinion, when you're playing guitar. Part two is gonna be how to change those chords smoothly, which is probably one of the number one questions I get from people is how do I do that and make it sound right? Uh, part three, we're gonna put all those things together and learn how to play a song. A little classic America song with two chords that you can sound good while you play with folks. And the last part of the, the member or the last part of the workshop is gonna be over some practice tips, some things you can do in this new year to build some good habits and keep playing more guitar. And it says Skip is here. What's up, Skip? Thanks for tuning in. So there's some folks from the membership on here, so thanks guys for tuning in. And uh, feel free to pipe up and uh, if you have questions or comments, let me know. Okay, so the first part of this is going to be Strumming 101. And before we talk about Strumming 101, we're gonna talk about Picks 101. So we're gonna talk about how to hold the pick correctly so that you have some control and so that you're strumming your guitar in a way that uh, feels comfortable and sounds good. So the first thing we're talking about is grab your pick. I just use one kind of this regular, it's a very common size pick. And I tell folks to uh, pretend you're clicking a remote control for a television back when we had those. You're gonna rest the pick here on your uh, index finger, kind of the last digit of it. And then you're going to just pop your thumb back down on there. And one thing I always uh, kind of warn people about, sometimes folks have a tendency to hold their pick way back here. And if you're doing that, 
and you're strumming your guitar, it's it's not going to stay in your fingers long. You're going to lose it into the sound hole or flip it off into the floor. So you want to move up a little bit. Um, if you guys can see that, you want about this much sticking out of the actual pick, maybe a quarter inch or so. And the reason you do that gives you a lot more control on individual strings. And when you strum, you can still hold it a little lightly. You don't want to crush the pick. It's kind of like a bird. You don't want to squeeze so hard you kill it. But you also don't want to hold it so loosely that it flies away. So if you're holding your pick the right way, then I talk about um, when you're strumming, it's more, there's a lot going on. And let's not even worry about your strumming hand. If you watch me strum a guitar, there's a lot happening. And we're gonna talk about toe tapping, which is, you can't see, but you'll be doing a lot of. But your elbow's moving, your wrist is moving, you're holding the pick the right way, you're tapping your toe, and I want to show you kind of the motion for strumming. You're going to, it's mostly in the wrist. It's not a lot of, you know, elbow action, it's mostly wrist action. So you have, your wrist is going to rotate, so you have this kind of a motion. Your pick is actually going to kind of point up at you when you're strumming down. A little harmonics there. And then when you strum up, your pick's going to kind of rotate down and point toward the floor. So it's this, not kind of straight into it. I see that a lot with folks when they're starting out. They'll hold it real stiff and straight into the strings, kind of horizontal to the floor. And that's not what you want. You more, want more of a fluid motion. Nice and relaxed. Your wrist is rotating. So that's kind of the picking motion. And now we're going to talk about um, tapping your toe. Uh, if you get anything out of this workshop, this is the one thing you need to remember. <laughs> you need to tap your toe to music all the time um, until you bug everyone around you. So uh, what I tell folks is that when you're watching someone play music, you're listening at a club or a bar or a concert, or even just watching on TV, I want you to uh, take a look around at people. And most people will naturally clap when they're listening to music they like, right? So if you look out in the audience or just around you when you're with a crowd, you'll see people clapping in time with the music. We're gonna talk about strumming in time with the music and kind of an analogy to that is the clapping. Um, the reason I say this is the most important thing to get right is because it's the most noticeable thing when it's not right. So when you're at, in a crowd the next time you're watching people clap along with some music, peek around and you'll see most people clapping in time, but there's always gonna be one dude who's not and it's gonna be completely noticeable because he's not in time with the rest of the crowd or the music. When you're playing your guitar, let's say you're doing some you know, individual strings and you hit something wrong, you can really correct it pretty quickly. Most times people aren't even gonna notice. You might notice, but most people won't. When you're strumming a guitar, however, and let's say even by yourself and you're kind of singing along, where you're playing with some buddies, uh, especially if you've got like a drummer and a bass player kind of doing the rhythm stuff. If you are not strumming your guitar in time, you might notice that it sounds very noticeable because our brains want to uh, resolve to some rhythm and they want to pick out patterns. And when you're not doing that, when you're strumming, it will show up. So that's why I kind of tell folks, no pressure, but you want to get the rhythm right. The best way I've found to show folks how to get rhythm right is to tap their toe. So you'll want to uh, practice this. You can just turn on any song that you like, and it doesn't matter what it is. So if you turn on a song, you can typically hear the beat of that song. It's usually kind of a snare drum, you know. And you clap to that. You can also tap your toe to that. If you don't yet have a metronome or a metronome app or a metronome website, something that's helping you actually 
um, hear a beat while you're playing. Let's just do. Oh, that's a little, a little fast. Let's slow that down a little bit. So if you hear the beeping of a metronome, that is symbolizing the beat of a song or a mu of music you're listening to, and you're clapping along with it. And you have to actually kind of work at it to get it in time. Same thing with music, but the more you practice it, the more you tap your toe to music, the more you'll get used to it and make it part of your memory and your muscle memory. So. When you're playing a song, I tell folks to always tap to the beat and count. We're going to do a lot of counting tonight, <laughs> counting to four. So you have a beat. can't see my foot, but if you're clapping to it and tapping your foot, your foot hits the ground when you say the numbers. So if you're listening to music and you've found the beat of that music, you're tapping your toe, it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. That's when your toe hits the ground. Okay. When you pretend to take a piece of string and tie it around your wrist, and then take that imaginary piece of string and tie it around your toe, that's the best way I've shown folks or give them an idea of strumming in time. Because when your toe hits the ground on those full numbers, then it's dragging down. Your toe is pulling your wrist down and you're strumming your guitar on the downbeats. So you have one, two, three, four. String pulls the wrist down. Now the other part of the timing is that, that when you are clapping or tapping your foot and you're going down on the numbers and the whole beats, one, two, three, four, when you come up, you're adding in the ands. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. When that's happening, your imaginary piece of string is pulling up your toe on the ands. And your toe is pulling down your hand, or your wrist or whatever, down on the beats. So you have this constant motion where you're... Um, I play the guitar right-handed, so if you're strumming with your right hand, your right foot and your right hand should be tapping together. So you have the imaginary string pulling your wrist down, and then when you pull it back up, it brings your toe back up. So it's in sync, and that's a great way to get used to and practice playing in rhythm and in time. Hey, hey, Randy's here. What's up, Randy Paul. and Paul? Got a bunch of members on here tonight. It's cool. Thanks for tuning in, guys. So that's the um, kind of little, not into like tricks and bells and whistles, but that's one thing I use a lot with folks because it seems I've seen people make the most progress when they approach things that way. So you have your wrist that goes in a, this motion, and you're holding your pick, and your toe is hitting the ground, pulls your wrist down, and when you bring your wrist up, it pulls your toe up. So if you just kind of play a G chord, um, this is going to pretty much cover two strumming patterns that you can play in almost every song that you want. Um, I really believe that when you learn how to play a song, it's the best way to learn how to play guitar, and you can really start with some beginner level strumming and work your way up to the more advanced. So. If you're strumming, the most common strum pattern is just four down strums. One, two, three, four. Let's use a metronome and kind of put a little tap to it. <laughs> if my battery doesn't croak. One, two, three. So maybe like about 80-ish. So you have that you want to tap your toe with that beat. Imagine that string. Just play that chord. One, two, three, four. Down, 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 down. That's kind of the first strum pattern you should learn because you can apply that to almost every song. 
to add in the ups and the ands, you're going to, well, to add in the ands on the counts, you're going to add in a strum on the up strum. So you have this going on. One, two, three, four. Add in the ands. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. That's kind of fast. So you can go much slower. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. And, and your, your toes tapping with your wrist movement to all kind of make it one seamless action. So that's kind of the first part of this workshop. I, um, again, it might be kind of rudimentary, but this is a very good thing and a good place to start. So that's kind of the first piece. And if you are practicing with a metronome and kind of imagining that string and tapping that toe, definitely add that into your daily practice. Um, part two, what I talk about is chords. So if you're just strumming, all the time without playing chords. Actually, I kind of like doing that and just kind of using the guitar kind of percussive. But we're going to learn a couple of chords here, two chords to be exact, and they're going to be using two fingers each, which is nice. And we're going to use those chords to play a song once we learn the chords. So part two of this workshop is the chord section. So we're going to learn an E minor chord. And the E minor chord is going to be using your index finger on the 5th string, 2nd fret, and your middle finger on the 4th string, 2nd fret. You're going to, the way to practice playing these chords is to first fret them and then you're going to pick each string individually, all six, and then strum it, and then pick it again. And I want you to uh, pay attention to a couple of things. A really um, important part of changing chords smoothly is when you fret them correctly. So when you're fretting a chord and this E minor chord, you want your fingers to be curved. You don't want drag. Otherwise, you get that. And you want all the strings to ring out. So you want to be pushing down into your fretboard with the tips of your fingers and have them nice and curved. You should be able to take a pen or a pencil and have space in there. You should be able to play the chord with that in there. Okay, another little tip there. That's the E minor chord. Uh, the next chord we're gonna learn is, it's a funky D chord. Um, it's like a D6, he adds a nine in there. So for the purpose of this workshop, we're gonna call it a D6. To play that D6, you're gonna use your index finger. You're gonna move it up to the sixth string, second fret. And you're gonna make your middle finger is going to move down a string to the third string second fret and you're going to play all six strings again and then you're going to strum them and then pick them got a question from randy um e minor is usually first finger fourth fret and second finger fourth fret uh, well you're for the E minor chord, your first finger should be on the 5th string 2nd fret and your middle finger, or 2nd finger, however you want to call it, is going to be on the 4th string 2nd fret. So it looks like this. Yeah, so you got your index on the 5th string 2nd fret and you got your middle finger on the 4th string 2nd fret. It looks like that. Okay? In your moment. <laughs> Hey man, Randy, it's okay. We all have those. So for the D6, uh, I like this song because one, you can start really basic, but then you can get really complicated with it too. But for the chords, you got your E minor and then your D6 chord is taking your index finger, moving up to the sixth string, second fret, and then make your middle finger or your second finger down here on the third string, second fret. And again, pay attention have enough arch in your fingers that you can put a pen or a pencil in there. And the other thing is kind of pay attention to where your thumb is. Sometimes people want to kind of play a guitar like a baseball bat. And my hands are pretty big. Um, so you might see my kind of thumb poking out a lot when you watch me play. 
but you want to have some pressure so you're able to kind of squeeze the back of that you know neck here and get some pressure to push down into the fretboard with those strings so for the E minor and D6 I want you to uh, when you change them smoothly and learn how to do that you're gonna think about what the chord looks like what it feels like and the way that you're making the shape and then you're gonna practice this little trick here uh, not a trick <laughs> so you're going to take the E minor and pick all six strings then strum and then you're going to change to the D6, pick all six strings, strum, back to the E minor, back to the D6. When you're pretty comfortable with that, the next part of your practice can be four down strums, tapping your toe with this invisible string on your wrist, four beats on each, four strums on each chord. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Next level, two down strums each chord. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And the final phase is one strum each chord. Just work on the speed at which you're able to change those chords and you want it to be clean so it doesn't matter how fast you are if it's not clean and you know ringing out you want to be able to work your way up it doesn't have to be that fast but you know it's a nice progression to kind of just pick and strum then four beats then two and then finally one that's why I say um, when you're practicing each day, this is what I call practice, something like that exercise for four or five minutes and then play. Uh, you don't need to sit down an hour every day and drill yourself through these. First of all, you're going to get bored and probably end up giving up, so don't do that. So that's your E minor and that is your D6 chords. You've kind of got the idea of how to strum them and pick your, or tap your toe. And you've got your wrist movement, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So those are kind of the, that's the bulk of the workshop. Next we're going to kind of actually learn the song. And the reason I really like this song, uh, it's America. Um, did this song, A Horse With No Name, and it's those two chords the entire song, and you can use the down-up strum pattern through the entire song, and it's going to sound fine. And when you're doing that, it's nice to actually put it together with something you are familiar with. So dial up the old America Horse With No Name on your phone or your iPod or whatever you use, or your, the website or Spotify, whatever you're using. It is, uh, you know, a faster song, but for the purpose of this workshop, I'll just kind of play it so you can hear what you're going for. And then i um, also going to show you a more advanced pattern to use, too. But to stick with the beginner workshop theme, this is what we're going for. And the nice part is it changes on each chord, so it's down, up, down, up, down. Six down and down. So when you're starting out, the, the song begins on E minor. It just alternates on those two chords. Tap that toe and rotate that wrist, and that pattern will sound fine through the whole song. It's a little faster. You're work your way up to that. On the first part of the journey, I was looking at all the light. There were plants and things and rocks and things. There was sand and hills and rings. My favorite part. Of the
the song's just a little... La, 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 Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, one and two and three and four. And string is pulling wrists down. Toe is coming back up. <laughs> So hopefully that makes sense to people and you can use those two chords to play that entire song. And that's kind of the beginner version strumming pattern and it'll sound fine and that's what you should definitely know how to do and be able to play along with the record with it using that pattern before going to the next pattern. Uh, the pattern I'm going to show you now is the one they actually use. Got to uh, get that one in my head. So for that pattern, I'm going to slow it down for you and um, don't let it intimidate you. You can just break it down into there's a strum pattern for the E minor chord and there's a strum pattern for that D6 and it's more advanced uh, for folks out there. But if you want to play and work your way up to this, um, have at it. So it really, it just sounds good too. It's like two, heard a lot of the three chords in the truth. This is one of those two chords in the truth songs. So let's talk about the E minor strum pattern first. The way it starts out, and when I just say bass, that's the root of the note. And the root of the E minor is the sixth string. So you're just going to pluck the sixth string by itself, then you're going to go down up. And typically when you play the bass and then go down up, you don't have to play the bass note again. You can just play that sixth string, strum down up, like on the fifth string down. So it's a bass down up, bass up down up. Bass down up, bass up down up. Bass down up, bass up down up. So really slowly, that's the pattern. Now we're going to speeding it up. you get more of a, and I guess you kind of hang on that first bass beat a little, a little longer than the rest. And again, you're playing all six strings for this chord. That's the E minor pattern. The D6, so the good thing is the pattern's always the same on each chord, so switch the chord, switch the pattern. So you're learning two chords, two strum patterns and playing are actually a pretty cool song. Okay, the D6 pattern is a, is an, it starts on the bass again. It's a bass up click. So let me break this down. So first get used to going bass up. So your bass, and you can hit both the sixth and fifth string if you want to, it doesn't matter. So it's a bass up, and when I say click, there's a couple different ways you can do this. It's going to sound like this. Bass up, click, up, click, up, down, up. Bass up, click, up, click, up, down, up. When you click, a um, couple different ways you can do that. If you uh, just Use the, you're not going to hurt your guitar. Um, use the fat kind of part of your palm here. And you're just coming down in your strings, pretty much kind of between the sound hole here and the bridge. And when you do that, what you're hearing when I say click is you're bouncing the strings off of your metal frets. So you get kind of a little snap, kind of like a snare drum snap. So you have that click. So all together with the E minor, you have and 
you have that pattern with those, again, I want you to learn the... Learn that one first. One and two and three and four and before moving to the oops. And when you also click, you can sometimes use your you'll see me using my pick sometimes. At the same time I'm kind of coming down to click those strings on those frets, I'm also just dragging my pick on the strings to get an even more of a nice percussive click sound. <laughs> Folks talking to each other here. So that is the, uh, the gist of things for the main beginner part of this workshop. You have kind of the strumming 101, you've got your two chords you want to play together. Oh, Dylan's on. What's up, Dylan? And um, you've got your chords that you've learned. You want to practice those and changing those because obviously in this song you're going to change the chord every, uh, you know, every measure, every other measure. And you've got a nice little kind of strum pattern to shoot for that's a little more advanced than just the down up strum. And then the last part of this workshop, I just wanted to talk about kind of three quick things for you to have. Uh, some good ways to build some habits in the new year when you're playing guitar. And uh, my first tip is to play a little each day. So don't, you don't have to overdo it. You can just play for five, 10 minutes a day. Uh, part of that could be working on those, you know, those actual skills you're learning. And the rest of it can just be strumming or playing along learning your favorite song or playing your favorite song. But you want to do a little each day. You want everybody to be tapping that toe when you're doing it. And number two, um, if you don't have a tuner, uh, one thing I've seen with folks is you want to, I just use one of these little, I really like these things. It's a snark tuner, just pops on the headstock. But you want to tune your guitar before every time that you play. Even if you're playing daily, you want to make sure your guitar is in tune. Um, especially to stay in standard tuning when you're starting out because you want your ear to eventually understand when it's not in tune and that's going to also help you learn to play by ear later on. So tune your guitar before you practice every day for four or five minutes. And then um, the last thing I have is for folks, especially first starting out, is work through the pain. <laughs> so if you've not played guitar in a while and you're making this the year that you're going to do that, um, especially if you're playing acoustic guitar, with the, you know heavier strings than an electric guitar, you're gonna get some calluses on your fingers. And believe me, if you play through those and you keep going, those will go. Well, the calluses will get stronger and your pain will go away. Um, you know, don't play if your fingers are bleeding and whatnot. But you want to definitely uh, stick with it long enough to play the guitar and get those calluses worked up, and then you'll be able to play without any discomfort. So those are my uh, kind of tips to keep track of for this, uh, for 2019. Um, that is the kind of bulk of the workshop. What I wanted to talk to you guys about real quick before you go is to make sure you check out the link in the description of this uh, video because we're uh, doing a little YouTube exclusive uh, trial. Um, I don't know if folks know, so Relax and Learn Guitar, I've got a YouTube channel and a website, but uh, the main purpose of what I do is to work with others and also folks working together inside the Relax Learn Guitar membership. And that's where I help folks over 40 learn how to play guitar. There are, gosh, I think over 140 video lessons in there now. Tablature, lyrics, ebook, um, personal support directly from me, um, talking to you by email. Um, we also have a private Facebook group that members are um, included in. That's where we do a lot of our Q&A and song requests that you can uh, check out and do. And um, I've put things together in a very logical order and so you can stop having to worry about guessing how to start and what to do next and what random video should I search for today. Um, <laughs> just to play to the hurt, take a break, then play some more. That's good advice, Joe. Um, for the fingers there in the calluses. 
um, inside the membership. It's very well laid out for you. Um, no guessing, uh, easy to understand. So making this a, a real easy thing for you guys to check out. So in the YouTube description link, there's a $1 for your first 14 days. Absolutely no risk. Jump in there for a buck, check out the membership, check out the lessons. Um, if you like it, then great. You can stay for just uh, 19 bucks a month after that. Um, otherwise, if you don't, you can just cancel and not just be out your, your one buck. But um, from what I've seen and heard from folks, um, if you think that you can't, you know, that you're too old to learn this stuff and it's too late to kind of learn how to play the guitar, um, or that it's too hard to get it right, it isn't. Um, you can do that. There's been, uh, you know, lots of folks that have been able to, well, actually David was the one who said, um, if I can learn this, anybody can. And then Bob had made a comment about, you know, it's great to learn new stuff, even at my age. And, you know, there's some folks in the membership that, you know, we're not, um, we're not all 20 year olds. <laughs> we're not all going to be Eric Clapton either. Um, but you can have fun while you're learning how to play guitar and you can have that be something that's relaxing and enjoyable for you. Um, even though we're not going to be Clapton, you can uh, learn how to play guitar for yourself and others. Uh, I've got um, Anthony who's played at a family birthday party. Um, Skip, I think, was on her earlier. He's done some stuff at holiday uh, get-togethers. Um, Terry's playing in his worship band. Um, and these guys weren't doing this before they joined the membership. Um, and then I think it was, um, I don't know if it was Paul. Paul said he's working on being the Campfire King with all his buddies, which... I really like the Campfire King thing. So um, those things are all possible for you. There are lots of people doing that route now in the membership, and you can do that too um, and be able to learn to play. So for just $1 for the trial, you can click that and check it out and um, no risk. If you guys have any questions about the membership, pop those here into the comments or about the workshop we just did. Last comment I saw was from Joe. So, um, another question I kind of get, a common question that I get about the membership is, you know, how does it work? Um, it's basically a, it's a secure site. It's um, popping in your information and your credit card, and then it's just an automatic billing for, uh, for the membership. And it is cancel anytime, so you, it's no obligation. You can um, jump in or out of the, there whenever you like. And um, it is for, you know, folks that are a little older, um, they're looking to maybe play guitar in their downtime. Uh, maybe they're empty nesters too, like we are, and have some time to themselves to play. And they want to do that in a place that's um, you know, supportive, easy to learn, and, and fun to do. Let's see. Where are we at? About 40 minutes in, so pretty good timing here. Um, find a jam group by... Oh, yeah, that's another great... Great suggestion. Um, I think people learn a lot better when they're playing out with others. Bill in the membership has shared pictures of his jam group that he gets together with on a regular basis. Um, <laughs> and then they let you make noise. Well, that's okay, Joe, because eventually the noise is going to be music. So it's not going to, it's going to all work out. <laughs> and Randy, is Randy the one who had the senior moment? Yeah. So Randy, who had a senior moment, also says that it's good for the senior brain, which I actually agree with that. It's good for your brain. It's good for your soul. Um, there's nothing bad about the guitar, so why not check out the membership and and from make this the year that you're finally going to learn how to play that guitar, and I can help you out with it. So uh, let's see. Any other questions, let me know. Um, and I think that's about it as far as the content we have here. Oh, the other question I get a lot from the membership is what um, happens uh, once you join. I never, never going to raise your prices, never going to raise your rates. So once you join and you're in at that rate, it's for the lifetime of how long you stay in the membership. So as long as you stay in, the prices are going to change. And you always have access to those lessons. Watch them whenever you want, as often as you like. And if you get stuck, just let me know. Okay. So if there's no more questions, I think we're going to probably wrap things up. I wanted to thank you guys for coming to the workshop. Um, first one of 2019. I'll be doing several of these this year, so um, keep an eye out. If you're on the email list, you'll definitely get reminders. If you're not on the email list, then head over to RelaxLearnGuitar.com and join the email list. 
Um, if you like this video, click the like button. And if you've not yet subscribed to the Relax on Guitar channel, please do that. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And you can always leave comments, let me know what you'd like to uh, learn about and do next. So again, love hanging out with you guys. I'll see you guys for the next workshop and um, you guys take care.